my name is Jamie. I'm the PTNS coordinator here at Alliance Urology, where I manage the PTNS program uh, for our overactive bladder patients. Uh, this is a treatment that we use, that we prescribe for patients that have overactive bladder and they have tried maybe a few medications and either the medications didn't work for them or they had some type of side effect. So this is the next step in line um, as it's the least invasive of the third line therapies. Before we begin the in-service, let's go over the function of the stimulator. So this is the urgent PC stimulator that we use to deliver the PTNS treatment here in our office. Um, once you have the patient seated and comfortable, you want to go ahead and turn on the device. You want to hold this top button for two seconds. Uh, once the device is turned on, you want to go ahead and press this yellow button, which goes into test mode. In order to the increase the electric stimulation, you want to hit this plus button. And if you want to decrease it, you would hit this minus button. Once the patient has informed you that they're, you know, they're getting a strong amount of electric current, you want to hit this green button to go ahead and enter into therapy mode. If you have to stop the device at any time or stop the treatment at any time, you want to hit this red button and that will stop delivering the electric current. Now that we have an understanding of the device operation, let's talk about administrating therapy to the patient. This is how I train our staff on PTNS so we can all deliver consistent care. Before therapy, it's important that patients are educated on the procedure and expected improvements. I explain PTNS therapy to them and have given them our patient handout as covered in another video. The first step is to get the patient comfortably seated and at ease. Because the treatment leg needs to be supported, we use this chair and footstool. Needle placement is the key to delivering effective therapy. Locate the needle insertion site on the inner leg, approximately three finger widths away from the center of the ankle, and one finger width toward the back of the leg. Clean the insertion site with the alcohol pad. You can also use the Labrie Needle Placement Guide. Before removing the clear guide tube and pink stop plug, Place the needle electrode over the insertion location at a 60 degree angle from the ankle, pointing towards the head. For patients with larger ankles and patients with edema, we found that a larger angle, such as 90 degrees, works better. Remove pink stop plug. Gently tap the top of the needle electrode to pierce the skin. Remove the guide tube. Using a rotating motion, advance the needle electrode until approximately three quarters of an inch or half the bottom portion is inserted into the leg. It is important to maintain a 60 degree angle while advancing in a path with the needle tip pointed towards the head. Connect lead wire to the stimulator. Remove adhesive backing from the surface electrode. Place the surface electrode on the inside arch of the foot on the treatment leg. Attach needle electrode clip by depressing the plunger and hooking around the needle electrode. Turn on stimulator. Begin treatment by talking to your patient about how you would confirm that the stimulation is reaching the tibial nerve. Patient response may be either motor or sensory. For some patients, it may be both. Ask your patient to let you know if they start to feel a sensation or tickle in their leg or foot. Patients should not be given leading comments as to where the sensation is felt, especially the first time. Instead, ask them if they feel a sensation and where it is. Sensations vary, and it could be in the heel area, bottom of the foot, toes, up the leg, but not only at the injection site. If the sensation is localized to the immediate area around the insertion site, the needle electro may need to be inserted further. At this point, I transition to the test mode by holding down the yellow test button for two seconds and adjust the current button to see when the patient feels a response. Identify treatment level by using the plus button on the current adjustment button. Slowly increase the setting while observing the patient's foot for a response. Ask the patient to state any sensations they may be feeling. Confirm the patient's response. Motor response is usually a toe flex, toe fan, or toe twitch. Sensory response is generally described as a mild pulsing sensation, which travels away from the insertion site toward the heel, arch, toes, or up the leg. If the patient is uncomfortable, reduce current setting, reposition needle electrode, or try the other leg. About half of the bottom portion of the electrode should be inserted into the leg. If there's neither a motor nor sensory response, adjust the needle electrode. If there's still no response, discard the needle electrode and try the other ankle. 
Note that an individual patient's response may vary from treatment to treatment based on the needle electrode depth and location. If the patient feels any discomfort or they lose stimulation sensation, adjust the UPC stimulation during the therapy without restarting the procedure. Once appropriate therapy level is identified, press and hold the green therapy button for two seconds. Therapy mode begins and is automatically set for 30 minutes. The treatment level may be increased or decreased at any time. However, if you turn off the stimulator once it's in therapy mode, you will need a new lead set. When the treatment is complete, the stimulator will display the word end and emit a series of three beeps. Turn off stimulator and remove the needle electrode and other components. Discard as appropriate. Remember that the patient's treatment level will vary based on death and treatment. So patients shouldn't think that they're receiving less effective treatment if their number is four one time and nine the next, and so on. Give the patient your bladder diary to chart their voiding before their next therapy for use in benchmarking their improvement.